Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you at the start of the new year. We're starting it out really, really busy. Hi, happy new year. Happy new year. Hi, Julie. Hi, Jamie. Jamie is my assistant. We'll be um, answering questions, everything to do with voiceover. Let's see what's going on with Nick joining. So I was explaining to everyone, Nick, that the reason that we're bringing this to them is there are so many voiceover auditions out there now on traditional breakdown services and people are coming to me and asking me um, how do, you know, oh, oh, can you coach me? I'm sure you get those calls too. All the time. Can you coach me? I have a voiceover audition. I've never <laughs> done one. What do I do? <laughs> Let me try and cram everything I know into 15 minutes and we'll get you going. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of new business, things that if you even look back to when I started in the business, there's so many new opportunities that never existed. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the proliferation of all the cable networks, all of those neat promos, all of those shows, a, a great number of them have commercials running on them. Um, and they're very localized because as cable outlets, you can really break down the, the media buy to very local buys. So there's a tremendous amount of, of new work that never existed. Yeah, and there's also with all, like Nick said, streaming. There's so many streaming opportunities and voices for museums and voices for trains, announcements. And, um, you know, that probably would lead us into our first question that someone wrote in and asked is, how do I even start in voiceovers? Um, and why, why don't we even start with that I mean Nick and I have a core kickstart intensive because there are basics that you have to know to start in voiceovers do you want to talk about some of those basics that absolutely. people absolutely and when I first started getting into voiceover um, I actually had a friend who worked for an ad agency and he said you know I know you like doing this voiceover stuff um, but you know, why don't you talk to some of these agents I work with and find out how to get started. And basically they all said the same thing. Take a workshop, get proficient, put together a demo. If we hear something we can work with, we'll talk. And so that's really the, the whole process. And being an actor is a big, big plus. Um, but you don't want to build that beautiful house on a shaky foundation. You know, right. you're going to have right. the best materials in the world, the best talent in the world, if you're not building it on a solid foundation, it's not going to work. And it's very, voiceover is very specific. Um, it's a, a, a talent that is, has uh, really come into its own in the last couple of decades. You know, it's kind of the redheaded stepchild of, of the entertainment industry for many, mm -hmm. many years. People, voiceover, oh no, I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, now everybody's clamoring to get into it because it's such a great way to, to use your talents and it's so much fun. It's something I've been blessed to do for the last 40 years, get up every day to do something I absolutely love. So, uh, but you need to start with that good solid foundation. And I'll go a little further by saying part of that solid, solid foundation is how do you analyze a piece of voiceover copy? Number one, you have to know how to analyze a piece of voiceover copy. Then you have to know what to do with your voice to fulfill what it's asking for. So you have to practice with people who can guide you um, and gently, um, yeah, move you here and there, change the dial. Um, it's, it's a process just like most of you on here are actors, I recognize your names. You know, it's, it's a process of experimenting. And so you want to do that in a safe place. So how to analyze a script, what to do with your voice. Is your voice doing what you want it to do? Uh, what are some other things that you could think well, of? Well, and kind of to your point with, with regard to the, what you do with your voice, what you hear right now from me is my normal speaking voice. 
This is not the voice that gets booked most of the time. It's knowing how to work the microphone. It's knowing what projection mm -hmm. levels you're going to get. What uh, my, my friend Ross Wisbaum, who is an incredible uh, audio engineer, uh, he always talks about the proximity effect. How close are you to that microphone? Because you will get different sounds out of your voice depending on how close and how loudly you're, you're right. projecting. Right. So learning those things are, there are things that people don't realize. And then suddenly when you explain it to them, they go, oh, yeah, well, yeah that makes total sense. Right. And most of everything we talk about are things that you, you realize once you hear it. You go, sure, you know, just yeah. coming aware. I always think of the microphone actually as a relationship. So, um, yeah, you can also, we'll experiment with that too. Um, not only close, loudness, softness, intimacy, but... Um, an attitude that you talk, you know, are you talking directly towards the person? Are you talking beyond the person? Yeah. And so the mic is a relationship too. There's also a certain timing and rhythm in voiceover that's not as natural for, I'll give you one example. I just paused. That's a normal everyday pause like on on camera but in voiceover your pauses can't be that long they have to be condensed so that's a good example you know, uh, it, rhythm it has to do with the intent of what you're trying to say and then getting it to fit within that time parameter where we're given you don't want to skip those beats you don't want to miss those beats but you have to learn to condense those beats exactly and there's life in those beats and you know we'll talk about also, when you're ready, how to edit and not over edit. Uh, there's that when you hand in your submissions, send in your submissions. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, so. when producers and casting directors and clients are listening for things, one of the things they're very aware of is if something that sounds too perfect at the audition mm -hmm. stage. It means you've worked it to death. You've edited it like crazy. This is not broadcast quality you're sending in. This is to give them an idea of what your interpretive read is like. So when they hear something that's too perfect, they get very nervous about hiring somebody. How many takes was this Frankenstein together between? How long did it take them to get there? Because bottom line is when you show up to a studio or you're linking up with a studio on your, your Source Connect, time is money. They, they don't expect you to get it in one take please don't put that kind of pressure on yourself because if they did we wouldn't have editors you'd walk in just like a trained monkey you'd push the little red button you'd record you'd say your stuff you'd hit the body and button to stop and you'd be done they don't want they don't expect it in one take but if you're getting upwards of 15 20 you know takes now we have a problem you're either miscast or you're too nervous. In the beginning, nerves will always figure into it. Just give yourself plenty of time, arrive early, settle in, get comfortable, and do yourself a, as much of a favor to de-stress before you go into the booth and do your job. But you told me a story one about what happened to you once, and I know from casting sessions uh, where I send actors, that especially if it's radio, they'll have you do many, 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 many takes. And it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. They just want to cover themselves because it will cost, because there's uh, different variations of how they can go. Sure. And it will cost too much to bring you back. I mean, you had that experience. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, they flew me to San Francisco. This is before uh, ISDN and, and Source Connect and things like that where you could do things remotely. So they had to find me first class from L.A. to, to San Francisco. They had a, 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 tr a car waiting for me, drove me to the studio. 14 seconds of copy. We are, are doing two TV spots, but the, the scripts were identical, so they were just going to slug them into both. 76 <laughs> takes later, and I'm going, oh, my God, what am I not getting? What am I not getting? We get done, and the director says, yeah, go ahead. You guys go on upstairs, and, you know, uh, I, I have a couple calls to make. I'll be right up there. So as I'm going up with the engineer, the engineer says, great job. I go, great job, 76 takes. He goes, you don't get it. They, they 
usually do triple digits. They're going to have every possible permutation of that read in the can before they release you because they're not going to spend the money to bring you back up here for a pickup. And even in today's market, where you can do things on a, uh, a direct connect with Source Connect and, and whatever, they still have to pay you a session fee. They're not going to pay you a session fee for a pickup. They're going to get everything they possibly can. Had I known that, I would not have beaten myself up in the booth so much thinking, what am I not yeah. getting? But just understand, until they push that talk back button and say, Nick, you stink, get out of my booth, you're fine. Right. You know, just it, it's not always about you. Someone's asking about, in the auditions, mouth clicks, and I'll add dry mouth. Is that okay? My answer is no. There are ways to edit those. There are ways to avoid them. First of all, recognize that you have them, which is a great thing to do when you take a class, for instance, our car kickstart. And then, um, then there are ways to edit them out without over editing would you like to add to that because it is not okay in an audition no because that is the audition is going to give them an idea of what they're going to get at the session and if they hear something problematic like a lot of mouth noise they will not hire you because they won't take mm -hmm. the time in post-production to remove those clicks and do that and if you do remove those clicks to send them just be careful because again, what walks in the door, if it's not what was represented in the audition, just like a headshot, if you Photoshop the living daylights out of your headshot and you give them the headshot as you walk in and they go, when's the person in the photo going to show up? Probably not, not a good idea. <laughs> so there are things you can do to mitigate them, though. That's what you really want to do is get rid of the problem at the source. If it's, I know sometimes, Sometimes it's, it's horrible to say, if you have bad dental work, get it corrected. This is your livelihood. Spend the money. But if it's just simply things like, just remain hydrated. I've got my water right here. You always, you know, drink plenty of water. Avoid things that cause those, those mouth clicks and whatnot. Don't drink coffee first thing. And I know that's a hard thing to, for people not to do. Don't drink coffee before a session. Don't have dairy before a session. Do not eat chocolate before a session. If you do find that you're, you're getting pasty and you have mouth noises, water's not going to help you yet. Right. Not, not now. It'll take an hour and a half for it to hit your system. Apple. So although apple. people say apples. Yep. Apple juice or a bite of an apple. What it does is apple juice is actually more the viscosity of the natural fluids in your mouth anyway. So it's going to replace what it, water just washes those out. So that's not going to help. But take a bite of an apple. It'll stimulate your salivary glands and it'll re-lubricate your mouth. And then you don't have that pro problem with the mouth clicks and all of that stuff. But when you're working a mic really tight, wow, you can, you can see them as little spikes on your, your waveform. So little there things like that There are sprays now. Um, Voice I'm 30, starting to seven. collect a list of them, <laughs> sprays that voiceover people are using mouth sprays and there's all little tricks but basically no it's not acceptable to send in an audition yeah. that way someone's asking about a reel um how many spots to make a decent reel and um nick also besides being a fantastic voiceover artist and teacher he produces demos, really great demos. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have Nick talk about that before he does. I would just like to say that, that um, something that Nick referred to before, you better sound like your demo. You better not have it overproduced so it doesn't sound like you. Um, and Nick, take, take it away yeah. and regarding that and how many spots i know well, as a casting director i listen for a few moments yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't have time I, you, you know the the industry standard pretty much now is one minute on a commercial demo reel um in that minute what you need on there are as many things as you can get to fit that show your range and not everything you do but the things you do 90 percent of the time because the demo will be used to sell you 
in place of an audition sometimes. And I've booked plenty. Of that. Last year, I booked uh, 40 some odd videos for the 75th na anniversary of NASCAR. I never auditioned for it. My demo was submitted by the, the uh, uh, production company that I was working with. And so things will, will come from your demo. Actually, return business is the biggest source of, of work for me now, followed by my demo submissions. And in third place, and far behind, is auditions. You know, mm -hmm. you know that's the thing. Is it, That's the hard part for most people is in getting going, yeah. is working just off of auditions and getting that, that flow going. If you're booking one in 30 to 40, that is a really good booking percentage. If, if you're only reading one, you know, it's three or four pieces of copy a week, it'll take you 10 weeks to book on average. That's not going to build a career. So what you need to do is you need to do as much as you can to get your stuff out there. That demo is going to be a great sales tool for you. And as far as how many pieces you need, I've done demos with as few as three or four pieces and it's gotten people signed with an agent. There are three or four really good pieces. But it's enough to get them going. If it comes in at 35 seconds, do you have a problem listening to a short demo, Terry? No. Oh, I I know in a few moments um, whether the person's right because I hear them connecting to whatever spot they chose to put on their demo. And to that end, don't be in a rush to get a demo done too early. Right. Know that you there's a difference between a missed opportunity and a blown opportunity. Mm. A blown opportunity going out too early and not being ready will put you back however many months it takes you to recognize what you've done, then need to, to build up to get a good demo together for the second try. Mm -hmm. Save your time and money. Do it right the first time. Don't be in a big rush. And the other thing is don't overproduce your demo. Right. You can hide a number of, you know, uh, shall we say weaknesses in the mix. And these really highly produced demos are wonderful and they cost you a fortune. And the problem is it also raises the expectation level of the person who is hearing your demo. You better come in with, you know, sparklers and everything flying when you walk in to do your job. Otherwise, they're going to be grossly disappointed. I would rather under, you know, uh, raise their lower not necessarily lower their expectations but not raise their expectations and have them be pleasantly pleased with the end result when I walk in the door and give them what they're looking for yeah and and I know when I hear a demo if it's too slick or overproduced I'm I don't trust who is this person what do they really do because uh, it's obvious that it's highly produced in fact the trend now in demos is for them not to be so slick and not overly produced well and stay away from things that people obviously know you didn't do you know if you do Mer yeah. mercedes-benz everybody knows john hammond's been doing that for years you know mm -hmm. if you want to do kaiser permanent everybody knows that's alice and jenny you know the a lot of people a really, really great piece of copy anybody can do. It's taking the stuff that's so so and making it saying that you know, oh well, this person's got some chops, you know. And also, if you have a really highly produced demo, and nobody's ever heard of you, it screams demo. Your demo should actually sound like it's a compilation of spots you've actually done. And so, when you do things that are so obviously not your work but a demo, that works against you as well. So. Right. And someone, someone's asked, um, and it's a really good question. So, you know, you start doing voiceovers. And, oh, by the way, Jamie, there are some people who are interested in our core kickstart workshop because they want to get started right away. Can you put a link in there? We're due to start um, next Wednesday, Jamie. January 17th, but there's a few people who can't start until the following week, the 24th, so we might put it off one week, but Jamie will put, if you're interested, um, get in touch with us. She'll put the link for the workshop. Um, I will say that we made it 
through um, we we condensed our core kickstart intensive. We used to draw it out and we like looked at the industry and we said no and we made our core kickstart um, an intensive three weeks, three short sessions, so comprehensive, a chock full workbook and extremely affordable because we don't think it's fair at the very beginning when you're jumping in to see if you like this and most people fall in love with it to charge a lot of money for it and draw it out so jamie has she'll put that information it's basically www.voiceprintwest.com so so what happens when someone's stuck you know they they have their demo and they're auditioning and like what advice would you give someone to get through those rough patches well several things come to mind right off is one um i know it's going to sound so silly don't ever give up just keep going just keep going all you have to do is is trust me what i do am i the best voiceover talent in the world no what I do, I do well, and I do it consistently. And the biggest thing is consistency and tenacity and persistence. Once you know what it is that you do, go for it. The, the thing that I will say, and I, I was just getting into is, you know, an agent only gets 10% of the money. Guess who does 90% of the work? It would be us. It's, it's only fair, and nobody will ever be more concerned with your career than you are so if you don't have that drive and that commitment and that level of passion for what you're doing neither will anybody representing you right. so you need to be the one that you know you look at an agent and say guess what I just found a pile of money over here do you want to help me get it and they will gladly do that whatever you can do to bring and drive work toward your agent for yourself do it the best way to get work is create it you know Absolutely. When Absolutely. I, I have a client that I've been working with for 27 years, uh, and it all came out of a phone conversation 27 years ago. And they have to, you know, I, I don't call looking for work. I call looking to help, offering my, my, my help. Yeah. And I told this yes. producer, I said, look, here's the deal. I do voiceover. You find yourself in need, let me know. I'll be more than happy to get, you know, audition back to you you can run by the client get everybody on the same page and we move move forward from there she called me about a week 10 days later and she said hey what would it cost for you to do a, a, a VO for a, a demo that we're submission submitting to the department of defense for a, a bid and so it's, it's a bid that's an audition i'm not going to charge you for that she said well it's a half hour finished record we have to submit an entire uh you know program for them to assess. I said, okay, still an audition, but here's the deal. You get the bid, I want to be the guy. 27 years later, I'm the only guy that they worked with. So <laughs> when you're on the phone to a client direct, you're in a field of one. Nobody else is competing against you at that very moment. You're the one setting the pace and the tone and building a relationship. I don't care what anybody says, this is still a relationship business. It's just a little more more detached on making the relationships the way we used to. It's a different way of doing it, but still relationships. I agree. I agree. Also, um, that reminds me, yes, um, actors, voiceover artists, you should feel confident uh, presenting your, um, what you can do for us. And I, I love that way of looking at it as a casting director because I'm always searching for one thing or another. So if you are confident that you have whatever you have and you're just presenting it to me when you need this, I'm here for you. I can come through for you. And I just think it's a great attitude change if some of you are feeling that you don't want to bother people or um, that you shouldn't be marketing yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, no, I think, 
yeah. A lot of times people, it, there's, there's a fine line between being a pest and being uh, assertive. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> I oftentimes draw the parallels to what we do to dating, you know? Oh, or, how so? <laughs> well, oftentimes, you know, people are always looking for the perfect agent. It's like, no, it's a process. You know, you don't date, you don't marry the first person you date. Although some people have, and they've had wonderfully successful relationships, but just know, know that it's a process. Sometimes you go, well, yeah, I, uh, certain things I, I am attracted to, other things, eh, kind of deal breaker. Um, and then eventually, uh, sometimes you get into a long-term relationship, and then you suddenly wake up one day and you go, this is no longer working for me. Mm -hmm. I've left agencies after being there for t a decade um, for various reasons. And so things change. So don't be afraid of the change. Always be on, you know, aware of what's going on. But it's, it is very much like that. You know, you don't know until you've actually kind of lived in the circumstance for a little while to get a sense of it. And don't be timid. Don't be aggressive. Life is all about balance. You know, find out what it is. You, it's, it's an agency relationship with, with your agent. Know who works for who. They work for you, not the other way around. Doesn't need, need doesn't have to be antagonistic, but don't let them feel like they are doing you any favors. You don't get ninety percent of their money; they get ten percent of yours. So always just be aware of of what those things are and keep it in a good balance. Moderation is, you know, somewhere along the line got to be a dirty word, but it's actually a pretty darn good way to live. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think we've really gone over a lot how to start in voiceover. First of all, we established there are so many opportunities. Um, we can start you out. Nick and I have started out many people in their voiceover careers and they've launched their careers and they're out there working. Why not you? So, yeah, absolutely. There, there are people that there have been people that I've worked with that when I first started working with them, I thought, wow, they've, they've got a lot to, to learn. And son of a gun, if they didn't prove me absolutely, um, I won't say wrong, but underestimating them because they got out there and they did the hard work and they followed their, their dream and their passion and overcame what I thought were obstacles but actually ended up being the very things that they embraced and got them further. So, you know, I am by no means, I don't know everything and I'm always willing to learn from the people I work with. And some of you guys have taught me some really, really great lessons over the years. Yeah. You know, you mentioned changes, change. This business is constantly in change. I have been changing with it for years and even presently very important to be aware of the changes and be willing to change i know casting and our teaching it's like whoa we jump up on a surfboard and we ride that crest of the wave yeah. and uh we're right there with the changes and so should you be but once you know your foundation like nick started out by saying this once you have that strong foundation you can move all around and have fun with it yeah you can even add, add on to the building a little yeah bit, you know yeah. do different things i've been blessed to do pretty much every different genre of work in this business i've done animation i've done promos i've done commercials i've done audiobooks i've done uh, live announce, you name it, I've done it. And it's all the best thing in the world. I love what I get to do every day. I just can't, you know, can't even begin to tell you how good that is. That's fantastic. So if you guys do have any questions, info at voiceprintwest.com. If it's directed to me, they'll send it over and I'll get back Absolutely. to you. Um, you know, just feel free. We're here as a resource. Whether you take a class from us or not, that is not the point. We want to make sure you get trained properly to get out there. But if you have questions, please, please, please ask. We're here for a reason. And, you know, uh, helping you get where you need to go is our, is our goal and our mission. And if we see that, I just got a wonderful call from a kid the other day. As a matter of fact, 
that's who called. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how to get out of it without getting, you know, anyway. But he he started working with me a few years ago, and he just called me. He's already off to a great start for this year, just booked five jobs. Wow. So, um, oh. yeah, you never know. You never know. But this kid has worked his heart out, and I love that. that that's the most gratifying thing to me as, as somebody coaching people is them taking what I've given them and doing something with it. You know, as I've Fantastic. often said, I, I, I understand my junior high school teachers when they look at me and go, he's got so much potential. But yes. <laughs> hey, you know, there were girls in my class. It was a yeah. co-ed campus. What can I say? <laughs> but, you know, so, I'll yeah, be quiet. you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> I appreciate your discretion. <laughs> but yeah, you know, just uh, whatever you guys need, we're here to, to help you yes. along the path. I mean, that's really, I've been blessed to have wonderful people in my life, such as Terry, who, who has been very, very instrumental in helping me just also realize what it is that I do. I mean, you know, we all have these ideas, but it's not until you really get out there and, and start experiencing it, do you really understand how you fit into things and be open to things and just try stuff have fun we get paid to play so yes. uh, enjoy it all enjoy I'm, it all i'm not going to add anything to that i think it's just perfect nick i look forward to working with you either next week or the week after uh, on our core kickstart intensive and getting the year going again absolutely Thank it's good it'll be a lot of fun it always it always is we have a great time and we get to work with some really incredible people so yes thank you all thank you bye everyone take care bye nick <laughs>